with your family, enjoy happy hour with friends at the bar, or spend a day in the beer garden playing bocce ball and ping pong. Thompson Island Brewing Company in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware, open seven days a week. See you soon. Your home, your community. It's not just where you live, it's where you belong. At Dover Federal Credit Union, we understand what it means to be local. We started here, and we're not going anywhere. We're as local as it gets, and we like it that way. We're not just a financial institution. We are the local credit union that you can trust. Local people, local decisions. Dover Federal Credit Union. Hi, I'm Scott Kammer from Solo Concepts. Today we're at Matt's Fish Camp in Fenwick Island, Delaware. Come check us out. Matt's Fish Camp features seafood classics, coastal comfort food, and chef-driven specials that pair perfectly with our large selection of craft ales, curated wine lists, and camp cocktails. Matt's offers indoor and outdoor dining and is the perfect place to have dinner with your family, happy hour with friends, or enjoy lunch at the Raw Bar. Matt's Fish Camp in Fenwick Island, Delaware, open seven days a week year-round. See you soon. Wraps, signs, banners, and promotional items that can help your business stand out from the rest. Looking for an excellent way to convey a professional image? Customized promotional products are the perfect way to target new customers, increase employee retention, and boost your brand awareness. Let the professionals at Cassidy Graphics bring your advertising ideas to life. Give them a call today at 302-326-2412. Again, that number is 302-326-2412. Again, Cassidy Graphics brings your advertising ideas to life. I would always pass by Ferris on Kirkwood Highway, so I knew that they existed. We stopped in the showroom. We just clicked, like from day one. They did a total kitchen renovation for us. Ferris was so organized. They were on top of everything from day one. Always here when they said they would be, always on time, kept to the schedule. The level of comfort speaking to everyone that works at Ferris, they were just super friendly, easy to talk to, it was like they were friends, not, you know, people coming to work on our kitchen. The room is totally transformed from what it used to look like. To have all the seating now and the big table, the bench seats, it's great. I love coming home and just walking through the laundry room into the kitchen every day. It was just a great experience. We loved ours. High Five Hospitality, founded in 2004 when three guys teamed up to introduce the Buffalo Wild Wings franchise to Delaware. To date, they operate eight Buffalo Wild Wings in Delaware, Maryland. Also the Stone Balloon and Limestone Barbecue. And let's not forget, Expectation. And five Jersey Mikes throughout Delaware. High Five Hospitality's mission is to operate five brands that serve high quality products with exceptional hospitality. The things that matter most happen right in our own backyard. Our neighbors, our schools, the places we go, and the people we know. And now there's one news outlet where our story is told. Delaware Live. Locally owned community-based news. Free to every reader. Because Delaware's future belongs to all of us. Quality journalism we can trust to help us take on the day. Delaware Live. Our state. Our news. Our home. Welcome back inside Delaware Live Sports. Nick Allison Journey alongside Pat Garianis. We are courtside here for St. George's and Haver de Grace, the game following the Jersey retirement ceremony of Busy Bones Highland, who has made his return to school today to see his number five head up into the Raptors. He's in the far corner, and again, everybody over there really pressing him into that corner, talking to him over there. But it's been a great event. The ceremony was absolutely fantastic. Some great speeches from some yeah. of the alumni at St. George's, the um, teachers, students, principals. It was a fantastic event. Um, so great to see him back here yeah. in this setting. Just um, it was a great chance. We had to talk to him earlier, and you know, just. 
he was just beaming, just so happy to be back here, so humbled. And it was a fantastic ceremony we had ahead of the game. It really was. Uh, obviously, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of pride here in, yeah. in this uh, what he calls Hawk Nation. Uh, that's right. Yep, that's how he addressed him. His gym was filled. He had a lot of family and friends here as well. Um, it, it was a great, great ceremony, and uh, really, really cool to be a part of it for sure, Nick. Yeah, and then obviously, we we had that. If you want to go back and watch that, we got that. Uh, separate link that is available. So if you guys missed it, want to go back and check it out, it's out there on the page. Yeah, make sure you do. Again, a great ceremony, some great speeches. Make sure you go back and listen to some of the stories from Bones here at St. George's. And we are now getting ready for second half action. We have a 33-13 to ball game. St. George's out in front of the visiting Haverda Grace. Again, Pat, both of these teams have just two losses on the season coming into this contest. Haverty Grace taking this game late. St. George's need an opponent here for the ceremony or the game after the ceremony. Haverty Grace stepped up and they are here facing St. George's. Out of the break, shot no good underneath. And Pat, let's just recap what we saw in the first half. It was a lot of what we'll probably see here in the second half for St. George's. It was the defense into offense as that three is short off the hands of Christian Norwood. It was out basically what we see here from Haverty Grace for two from Cameron Balls. What we saw all first half out of St. George's, they were out and running. Yes. Offensive rebounds from Jaden Bull galore, and they were just scoring on leaking outlet passes down the floor. You're not kidding, Nick. And, uh, you know, it was a 13-8 game at the end of the first quarter. In the second quarter, it just was all Hawks. They were able to get out in transition, as you alluded to. Uh, had a dunk, had a couple layups. It just always seemed like it was a three on two off yeah. of missed shots and turnovers. And then... Just active hands from St. George's Ball. Drives, finishes in the air. How about the hang time from Cameron Ball? And now he'll have a chance for the old-fashioned three-point play as he'll head to the line now. And you talked about it, a 20-point lead St. George's built up at the break. Yeah. And Jaden Bull, he was the game high scorer so far in half number one. He had 10 points, the only player in double digits. And Ball can't complete the three-point play. But St. George has got whatever they wanted in that first half. They did. They were, like I said, they hit threes. They were getting out in transition. And they, they were turning turnovers and missed shots into points of their own. Uh, and you would have seen it all right here on Delaware Live if somebody would have just hit the go live <laughs> button. My Lord. It happens, don't worry. And again, yeah, apologies, turn man. over it's there. It's on me, Donovan <laughs> chest pat. Donovan <laughs> chest pat on that one. <laughs> but we are live and ready to go here for quarter number three. Coach Wilson making an appearance as he heads that, past man. the table. That's right, 2010 you know that, state man. champion football head coach. Is <laughs> that shot inside, no good for Aaron Ramber. We do have a whistle, though, on that side of the floor, and it's going to be against the Hawks and the Warriors will get possession here. So 33 to 17, it was 33 to 13, a 4-0 run here to start the third quarter for the Warriors. And of course, that is by far their largest run of the game so far. Yeah, you know, they've come out of the break here. They've kind of reestablished a little bit of momentum. They're playing with some more pep. Like, look at this. I mean, they, they're playing with good speed. They're playing with confidence and control, and they're in their half-court offense now. It's amazing what can happen. Um, you know, when you, don't, when you don't turn the basketball over and allow the other team to get out in transition, they've been able to settle into their offense, and now they're trying to chip away at a lead and a hole that they put themselves into, perhaps a little bit too of, okay, let's relax, let's regroup, let's come out in the second half and, and get ready to go. Obviously, there's a lot of extracurriculars that are going on yeah. here tonight. And again, yeah, Haverty Grace, both teams having to – St. George's team was out here watching the ceremony. The Warriors were in the locker room for that entire time. Again, having to come out a little bit late, a late start here, sh you know, clearing out the court, et cetera, for what it was a fantastic event as Blackwell goes one of two from the line. He had four first half points, now five after the free throw. And again, now lead just cut to 15. Yeah, and you know, we, we talked about it in the pregame that um, didn't go live, <laughs> but <laughs> having a great seven to two ball club coming into this game. So, you know, they've had a really good start to the season. St. George is at 11 and two with big time wins. Uh, we, obviously William Penn, they just came off a huge win at Howard. Uh, they got a win against a, a really tough Milford team as well. Yeah. So and it, this Havard of Grace School isn't, a, isn't a, a terrible, terrible opponent. They've had some success this year, as has St. George's. And you mentioned it, coming along on the road here to a foreign opponent in a foreign location. Tough matchup for the Warriors. Able to get the steal, now it's underneath and able to finish. Is the big fella Quentin Daniels. 
Hayes now got six. Yeah, nice little 7 0 run to start the quarter off. And Coach Rod Griffin's going to want to take a timeout and talk about this. I think this is a good timeout here. You had yourself a cushion. This has extended now uh, almost to a three minute run for, for Haver to Grace. But nice response here from the Warriors coming out of the break, Nick. Yeah, you mentioned it. 7 0 run. The Hawks still looking for their first points of the second half. Almost. Two minutes and 40 seconds. Trout here scoring-wise for St. George is out of the locker room. You said they rode that momentum from what was a very energetic ceremony that got everybody fired up. They looked great in the first half and now going to have to try to pick things back up here as they come out of the timeout. But all the credit to the Warriors. You said it. They really settled down. Just really looked out of place there in yes. half number one. Here, like you said, they've they got their feet under them now. They're settled in. And you could tell they look a lot better here in the third. Yeah, they seem to be spacing the floor a little bit more. You know, the length of St. George's really got to them in that first half. And you take a look at this St. George's group. You don't have a 6'7 or a 6'8 out there. But you got a bunch of guys that are hovering in that 6 foot to 6'2 range. And they're yes. long. They got length to them. So it's, they, they were de making deflections all over the place. They were grabbing every rebound. And Haver to Grace here in the second half seems to have spread the floor up to try to create a little bit of space maybe to get some drives into the lane and open up some backdoor opportunities. And they've done a good job adjusting here. Let's see what the Hawks do out of timeout. How and there he is, number 24, Jaden Bull, a 28-point performance, I believe, on the last timeout. And they go right to him out of the timeout. Cameron, or Kyle Sullivan trying to answer down the other side. Can't do it. I think a little soccer kick over there by him as he tried to pick the ball. Yeah, a little two-sport athlete. Love it. <laughs> so Bull has two more. He's got a game-high 12. And you can see Coach Rod Griffith going right to him out of the timeout. He was able to convert Blackwell inside. Too easy for the big fella. And he's yeah. got another bucket. Warriors here, they've done a lot, a better job of keeping composed. You know, they had a lot of looks in that first half around the rim, and they just kind of fired the ball at the basket as opposed to shooting it. They didn't know where it was going. They were worried about getting the shot blocked. Much better job here in the third quarter. Another turnover for the Hawks. Lead down to 13 now. 444 and ticking and another thing that really plagued Haver to Grace in that first half was second chance opportunities for the Hawks rebounding offensive rebounding Jaden Bull lived on the glass there in the first half already doing a much better job of limiting that here in the third quarter deep shot off the mark that time for Cameron Ball rebound taken by the Hawks Norwood though oh, lost wow. it on the floor but into the hands of Jaden Bull Jaden Bull with some speed in front of him underneath Rampert can't get it to go. His layup rolls off the rim, but will stay down this side, last touched by the Warriors. And those, those were the shots that they were hitting in that first yeah. half. That's shocking to see them miss down low that, that deep into the paint. To inbound, they'll get it back up top to Bull. It's Bull, Thomas, Norwood, Moore, and Rampert. Inside taking contact was Brakely. And he'll head to the line. Shot wouldn't fall, but he got two free throws on the way for number 23. Yeah, nice job. Good offense that time by St. George's. Kind of composing themselves, running a little bit of a half-court look there. Unable to convert on this first free throw, but I like the offense right there. First free throw off the mark for Michael Brakely. Second one is up and in. He's got five now. For the Hawks lead back to 14. Here's Hayes. Scooped with the left hand, just too strong off the glass. Blackwell able to take oh, wow. it back. And then Ball able to save it up right in front of us here. Near out of the out of bounds line. Inside hand off to Blackwell. Hangs in the air and finishes with that right hand. It definitely settled in, Nick. They've definitely started to settle in here. That's a charge. Wow, man, the whistles are silent here. Letting them play in the third, Nick. And then able to be finished off once again by Michael Brakely. So Brakely hits a free throw, then has a field goal. He's got seven. Cameron Ball, shot blocked. But Blackwell just hanging out under the rim. Couldn't finish. Shot taken out of his hands by Rampert. Now two on one. He's got Bull with him. Steps in and able to just finish it off himself. Defense to offense for Aaron Rambert as he goes coast to coast. That's more of what we were seeing in that first half. Their ability to get out and run quick. It was a constant three on yeah, two, I felt like, in the, the first half. The track race. meet for the Hawks in that first half. 40 to 24 lead back to 16. Nice find from Hayes. Who would have gotten the hockey assist as it went off the hands of Daniels to Blackwell. Shot blocked again as Blackwell looks over to the bench. Has some words for his own team. 
It's going to stay down this end as the Warriors will inbound with 2.59 to play here in the third. Get some subs in here. And I think that's big right now if you're a fan of St. George's. Seeing Tristan Blackwell come off the court. He had himself quite a run right here in this third quarter. Ball's floater, doesn't fall, rebound, tracked down by Aaron Rambert. Yeah, you said it. Blackwell's got five points in this third quarter. That's more than he had the entire first half. Yeah, and, and a bunch of rebounds keeping possessions alive. St. George is going to go to the post and able to get it to go underneath was Aaron Staggs, his first field goal of the game. Nice work. A little 6-0 outburst to extend that lead back out, Nick. Yeah, things got down to 12, I believe, yes, and right back did. up. Here with two and a half to go in the third, St. George is able to settle in after the timeout, but nice Sampson able to find his first field goal cut into the basket. Yeah, they've had this kind of, I don't know, that's a flex offense, and it's been working for them where they're swinging that ball around to that that far corner and this guy in, the, in this deep corner. So say that ball, that ball was over there on our left-hand side. This guy in the right corner is getting a double screen coming across the middle and they're finding that pass consistently here in the third. See if they continue that. And good adjustments made in the locker room for the Warriors. Still 2.09 to go here in the third. Nice pass and feed inside on the inbound, able to be finished off by Aaron Staggs. So Staggs fresh into the ball game, two straight buckets for him and the lead back to 18. Heck of a job here. What an answer by St. George's. And they very easily, when these Warriors started making a run, kind of got nervous. They didn't. They stayed composed, and now they're back up 18. Kyle Sullivan's three from the corner. Doesn't go. And how about wow. this? No one going to stop the ball. And Malik Moore, his first two-pointer of the night, has two triples. Give him eight. Heck of a job. Hayes answers quickly. His first bucket of the second half. Heck of a job right there. Oh, nice look. A little bit off on the pass though, Nick. Caldwell looking for the no look top 10 play nominee, but St. George is still able to keep possession here with 1.15 to go in the third as Caldwell, excuse me, Rambert will retreat and reset this offense. This is smart. This is just smart right here by St. George. You're well in control. No need to get out of control here. Wow, got kind of away, maybe with an extra step on the baseline, or maybe he's just that good. What a Euro step down there from Akai Caldwell for his first bucket, eluding defenders on his way up to the basket. I'll tell you what, man, that's a heck of a way to get yourself in the score sheet, right? <laughs> Whew. Sullivan. Out here looking like Bones with that footwork. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was, and the hang time there, too. You brought the ball down a little. A little jelly fan. Little style points there as well. <laughs> yeah. As Hayes gets it over to the wing, here's the trap on Cameron Ball, and I think they're going to get, I believe, Caldwell with a trip. I tell you what, very few fouls. That's only the fourth total foul called here in the third quarter. That's right again. You got a late start here at St. George's. The officials were, hey, got a late start. Let him play. Let him play. Yeah. <laughs> and I, we've almost got ourselves back on track, man. I mean, yeah, it's I'll tell you. Eight thirty-ish. Right now, eight thirty-three. You never know what you're going to get. Right? Sometimes games go by slower, faster. The officials, though, have done a great job here on this one. Cameron Ball, deep three, no good. Into the hands, though, of his teammate, Nye Sampson. And he is contacted by Robert Stewart. And now free throws coming for the Warriors. And Stewart got him on the arm there, no doubt about it. Another good second chance opportunity. The Warriors have done a better job here in the third quarter of generating these. So here's Sampson, first free throw of the evening. First one doesn't fall. They made, they made a little bit of a dig into this, but I'll tell you what, heck of an answer by St. George's to close this quarter out. And all that work the Warriors did, all those adjustments that they made, all that execution that they did, and they have not trimmed a point off of the lead. Two free throws, no good. Sampson gets his own rebound. That shot doesn't go either. Too strong off the glass. And now a new offense here for the Warriors. Hayes kicks to the corner, and that's a corner three buried by Sampson who missed both free throws but makes up for it. Adds a three from the side pocket. Nice call, they said his foot was on the line, Nick. Looking oh, up excuse the me too. Yeah, man, they got us all fooled. <laughs> Hayes so pokes this one away. Wow, that's a good point, Pat. In transition goes Kyle Sullivan. Didn't get that shot up at the buzzer. Would have counted. He's looking for a foul or a goaltend. Didn't look like it from where we were sitting. Uh, if anything, that's it, it may be basket interference because uh, yeah. that the backboard was slapped, and I, that I, that is about as legitimate as a case as I've seen in a while. <laughs> that's a good point. As a basket interference there. Well, that, we're gonna take a break. Count. We'll see. <laughs> we'll take a break. We'll let you know on the other side of the timeout. 
if that basket stands. 48 to 30, St. George is out in front on the Jersey retirement of Bones Highland. We'll be right back with fourth quarter action here on Delaware Live Sports. Welcome to Premier Physical Therapy and Sports Performance. We're a locally owned outpatient physical therapy practice with convenient locations in all three counties in Delaware. At Premier, we have experienced physical therapists with advanced credentials, but their hospitality, passion, and enthusiasm is what makes the difference for you. Find our convenient locations at PremierPTSP.com. You may have tried physical therapy, but have you tried Premier? Hi, I'm Scott Cammer from Solo Concepts. Today we're at Lupo Italian Kitchen in downtown Rehoboth Beach. Come check us out. Located inside the Hotel Rehoboth, Lupo serves coastal Italian cuisine with fresh pasta made in-house daily. Lupo features plenty of unique craft cocktails and an extensive award-winning all- Nick Allison, Drini, Pat Garian is here courtside. St. George's and Haver de Grace going at it here. Some Friday night hoops on Delaware Live Sports. Again, coming post Bones Highland Jersey retirement ceremony. His number five going up in the Raptors. A fantastic ceremony. And now game time here at St. George's as we're heading to the fourth quarter, 48 to 30. It's been all Hawks here at home in this one, Pat. It has. And, you know, a little bit of a, a flurry coming yeah. from the visiting team here. Uh, in that third quarter, um, trimming that lead eventually down to 12 points early in that the St. George's was able to, to kind of gather their composure and extend that lead back out to 18 heading into the fourth. Isaiah Harmon back out on the floor for St. George's as again we are underway with fourth quarter action. Daniel's able to poke that one away and steal it. Hayes in transition and that one swatted away coming right at us. Blair Thomas sends that one back. Heck of a job there. Good timing by Thomas. He swatted that one away. That's a top play nominee That's right a top there. Top play nominee. We got to get a graphic to flash up on the screen every time we have a nominee. We'll get one. That's we'll build right. one up. Daniels limbound underneath the basket here. 30 seconds into the fourth. Blackwell back into the game now for the Warriors. The floater from Hayes is pure. Got one to fall finally. Hayes has put that up there about three or four times in this one and hasn't been able to find a touch. He's able to put that one up and in. I've been close a few times, though. That one falls through for the sophomore. Lead to 16 now for St. George's, a minute into the fourth. They're led by Jaden Bull. He's got a game-high 12 points as Hayes pokes that one away. And there we got a whistle. Out outside the three-point line as Hayes will get called for the reach. And that's going to be his fourth personal foul, so it's just one more for him to work with. Yeah, he's got to be careful now. He's played good, he's played aggressive, he's played in control, but you don't want to pick up number five here. A lot of time left in this game. Nice ball movement here by St. Yep. George's, and they're able to get it inside to Brakely, and he's fouled and earns himself a trip to the line. Good aggressive take there by Brakely. Got seven points, one of two from the line tonight. He felt the rake right there, and he came up into it, a la Joel Embiid. Yeah. Who will be taking on Bones Highland tomorrow night. Nikola Jokic should be a good one in Philly. <laughs> that is going to be a good one. Hence why Bones is in town. That's right. Why again, this worked out so And great. again, he had to head out. He's got a curfew tonight. As so they got a game Coach tomorrow. Mike Malone, he wants to make sure he's <laughs> ready to go tomorrow. <laughs> Word coming in. Embiid has been fined 25000 for his DX celebration <laughs> against the it's Nets. It's well worth it. It's well <laughs> worth it, Joel. Deep three off the mark. Rebound to Blackwell, who skies above the rest to haul it in. In fact, I would contribute to paying his fines every time <laughs> he gets fined for that. It's Sorry one of my favorites. I Lots love it. As we have a whistle and a foul, Daniels had control of it. Brakely, I believe, will get called for the whistle. And Pat, did you see the video we put out after that, that night of the that of the? <laughs> it's absolutely great. great. Right uh, as someone, I had a DX right shirt growing rant. up. Yeah. I had one, and oh man, that was just so much fun to. That's what it, and that's, that's, you know, at the end of the day, you, you got to have fun. Compete. And then, uh, you know, also don't forget to have fun, man. Harmon. As Russell Westbrook said. <laughs> and we, win or loss, as long as we're having fun out here, man. <laughs> Just keep having fun. Three for Rambert is off the front end. Harmon gets the rebound. He'll elevate wow. and finish underneath. Nice work right there. Nice step through. Nice touch around the rim. And Pat, Joel Embiid, not a starter. In the All-Star yeah. game this year, missed 12 games. How do you feel about it? Uh, I think it's absolute. It's an absolute travesty. Okay, so you agree with me? I thought it's with the way you were leaning to the start, I thought I you were like, eh, no big deal. But I'm with you. Wow. It's an absolute travesty. Oof, I just, you know, this man's second in the MVP voting. <laughs> leads the voters. league in points per game. Leads the league in points per game. 
His team has climbed yep. and ascended in the standings to number three. Okay, you want to give it? You want to give Jokic right now at number one? His team's got the best record in the NBA. He's putting up big time numbers. I get it. Good ball movement. Bull able to finish off the window underneath. And once again, the Hawks' intensity on defense creating that turnover, leading to an easy bucket. Yeah, great job here. Again, it's, it's just been all night with this group. So let me ask you this, Pat. Bigger travesty here as Hayes trying to get it to Daniels. It'll be turned over here with 541. See Ringani not being a finalist for Coach of the Year or Embiid not being a starter in the All-Star game. I think both oh are pretty Oh, my gosh. Bad. I think they're pretty even. I yeah, right? Both, it, it, I, think it's, both I could not believe that Nick Sirianni was not a finalist. Not even a finalist well, for Coach of the Year. Know, Top three, I should say. You know what they say, Nick, about our fans. That is true. And, and nobody likes us, and oh, we don't man. care. And, you know, and you wouldn't think that it would be like that out, you know, publicly maybe, you know, if you're in Philly, hey, you know, nobody likes us. But it seems to be that way. It is. Well, especially with Embiid. So, like, Embiid right now, he would have been a starter, um, albeit the third top voting getter. Uh, if it, if the fans were not involved, the fans are what bumped yeah. him into the fourth spot, and I believe it was Tatum that he was competing against for that third How and final starting Donovan spot. Donovan Mitchell in the starting lineup. How about a Jaden Bull three? Or excuse me, that was off the hands of Thomas. Shot though no good. Warriors will haul it down. Lead to 20 for St. George's with 5, 10, and ticking. Yeah, uh, you know, it's disrespectful, but at the end of the day, the All-Star game is really a... a a it's for fun, popularity right? contest, <laughs> yeah. and I think Joel Embiid would much rather make an Easter Conference final for the oh first yeah. time in his career than make, start in the All-Star game. That floater starting to get going for the sophomore Hayes. Another one. He's got six second-half points. Give him ten for the game. He's into double figures. And there's a timeout, I think, here by Coach Griffin. With 4.47 to go, we'll stay right here. Nick Allison, Drini, and Pat Garianis live for Delaware Live Sports on some Friday Night hoops between St. George's and Haver de Grace. The Warriors coming, making the trip from Maryland and taking on the Hawks here at home. And St. George's 11-2 on the season, looking to get to 12-2. Haven't had this much success since Busy Bones was in yeah. a Hawks jersey. It's the truth, man. Yeah, they're, they're, they're looking good this they're, year. They're a team that we need, you know, you got to keep an eye on here, man. You got to keep an eye on them. And again, Busy Bones going to be making his trip to the Wells Fargo Center tomorrow to take on the Sixers. That's going to be a good one and a very, or I should just say, great crowd here tonight for the ceremony, for the game. And we yeah. got to hear from Mayor Perzicki and the mayor of Wilmington. He said he'll be sitting courtside tomorrow. And he said they asked him, you know, who's the most famous person from Delaware? He said, you got to narrow down to two. It's either Busy Bones Highland or the president, Joe Biden, and he said, hey, Biden was born in Pennsylvania, so Bones, you are declared the winner. That's the truth right <laughs> there, man. Yeah, Bones, he's repping Wilmington. Absolutely. Um, Had the ice on I today, love, right? I when love he, it. When he I saw up. the dog, Bone. Yep. The Bone, iced out. You know, I, this would have been a question I would have asked him. Yeah. And I don't know I don't know if he knows this or not, but obviously you know, I've heard the iterations of the nicknames where Bones came from, where yeah. Busy came from mm -hmm. as a kid. I've heard him on other, other podcasts, other outlets talk about yeah. that. But is he aware of uh, his nickname, particularly when you combine the two of them? As, let's, see the, let's see the end of this play. There's a foul. Yeah, Daniels will shoot too. Is he aware of in the great late 80s, 90s rap group Bone Thugs and Harmony? Is Ooh. he aware of <laughs> one of the members – being busy bone that's a good question i it's tried so of. hard i don't know uh, you know what i mean like, <laughs> yeah exactly bone like, thugs and harmony yeah i can is you know, he I know what i'm listening to on the way home now from here so uh you know i'm, I'm curious he's he's the real fast spitter too man. like he <laughs> that's he's a good question that, we had some we wanted to ask it. him <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> that is a treat for everybody at home that's right man but seriously, I, I want to know if, if he's aware of that or not because, I, like I said, when I heard him, you know, kind of explain it on, on these other – I think it was on J.J. Reddick's podcast yeah. or one of the other ones, um, and he didn't mention that. I, and like, I get – you know, he's got other – there's other reasons, more importantly, but I was just curious if, if he knew anything about that or not. It's a good question, yeah, and I wish we would have had a chance to talk to him. But uh, Hey, any NBA media who's watching this – Remember that. It's <laughs> a good uh, question for y'all out there. Yeah, or maybe I can try and get a press pass for tomorrow, Nick. Maybe we could go up. I would <laughs> love that. Yeah, we got to get there. Yeah. Corner three, off the mark, long into the hands. Oh, 
Keon Lang, who's been spectacular inside. Three the other way for the Hawks. In and out, Blackwell once again getting up and hauling in that rebound as we hit the 3.30 mark. Yeah, Blackwell's been good in the second half. I'll give him that. And those minutes that he wasn't out there allowed St. George's to extend this lead back out. How about those hands from Lang, able Whoa. to steal it, and Daniels down the other direction with the block. Excuse me, that was Cameron Ball. So we're showing off the transition defense. Got a hand on it. Great job by Ball there. Just, just skying up and, and making the play. Cameron Ball, the junior. The only senior we see on the roster, and it could be wrong, a lot of people aren't labeled, is Tristan Blackwell. So some subs here for the Hawks with 312 in ticking. As Makai Caldwell gets back into the game as well as Dylan Belhior, who has it now on the block. Double team, kicks it out to Rampart. It'll pass up on the three. Good passing, and then they're unable to hold it though was Belior underneath, and Hawks will turn it over with under three to go. And how about the crowd sticking around for this? And we got a good crowd here. Checking out the full four quarters here from St. George's. The ball able to elevate inside. Shot is short, and then trying to leak ahead of the pack was Caldwell. Trying to get it to him was Norwood, but stolen by Kyle Sullivan. Very packed. The JV wrestlers are in the house tonight. They got a JV tournament here tomorrow, so they are waiting for the game to conclude, and they got to set up. So it's oh. going to be a late night for the JV wrestling Hawks tonight. JV wrestling Hawks got to really got to get a practice in. <laughs> so they got to set up, get everything ready to go as Blackwell elevates. Couldn't knock down the jump shot. It's going to be a long night for those young men. It's going to be. Yeah, they better uh, they'll be ready to go. But they'll be in action tomorrow. So again, JV tournament here at St. George's if you want to come check it out. In transition, how about the no-look pass? Down low to Bellior, but will not count for anything. But some style points at least for Mackay Caldwell, but will not stand as the charge goes against Bellior. Yeah, right there, Black, Blackwell able to step in and, and take the charge again. He's been good in the second yeah. half. Warriors, you know, they just kind of dug themselves too deep of a hole in that first half. Hayes will launch a deep three. Ball will hustle down the rebound. He'll let it fly himself long once again. And the Warriors just trying to let things fly here as we tick under two minutes and a 17-point lead for St. George's. Norwood drives, gets it inside to Brakely, who was cutting on the baseline and the right back to the there. line. He's been living at the line here in the second half. It's been great. Heck of an effort. He's been good tonight, uh, as a lot of his, uh, his teammates have. St. George is pretty evenly distributed, too, yeah. scoring-wise. That's right, let's go through it now that, that you mentioned it, Pat, 11 points for number four, the senior Aaron Rambert, eight points for Malik Moore, four for Blair Thomas, six for Aaron Staggs, 10 for Michael Brakely, or excuse me, after nine for Brakely now, and 14 for Jaden Bull. You said it, they're getting some even scoring across the board, and Bull really not doing a lot of the scoring here in the second half, was really doing it in the first, as Brakely knocks down one of two from the line. Oh, two for two, excuse me. Heck of a job. So under two to go here. As it looking as if St. George is gonna find a win number 12 here at home. How about that finisher? Off the glass for Isaiah Frazier. Nice work by Frazier, nice finish. Little battles right now. Caldwell, another good lay to Bellior, but picked and stolen. Kyle Sullivan got a hand on it underneath, and now he'll drive, take it the other way, kick out, but a whistle and a foul before the pass. The right call, good drive there. I mean, that's good aggression, and, uh, you know, picks up the foul on the drive. I think we got one and one upcoming now. Our first one and one of the evening. Tell you what, man, just looking down at Bones, obviously they got his career totals down here. <laughs> 1,957 points. <laughs> that is insanity, man. You can combine, you know, years of teams and, you know, of starting lineups, and you just you still might not get there. And what a you, career I, he had. I what played. a scoring machine. Yeah. And not only that, he was a fantastic passer yes, yeah. as well when yeah. he was here at St. George. Free throw up and in for that the Warriors. That's insane, man. Listen, I played, I played basketball consistently. From the time I was four, in the Mighty Mites. YMCA? The YMCA. I played for the Mighty Mites, yep. Pat. Were we on the same team? Well, that was the league was called the <laughs> oh, Mighty Mites. Oh, that it was. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I, we had gray shirts. My team was gray shirts. I think shirts. We, had blue, we had blue shirts. All right. 
and uh, wow, all the way funny. through my senior year of high school. And I think if you, and then I played in a couple of rec leagues as an adult. I'm, and then I, I'll even throw in, I'll even throw in the amount of times I've played out at the park. Yeah. <laughs> and I think if you added every single basket that I have ever scored in my 30 years on this uh. earth, it would not add up to 1,957, <laughs> in which he did in four years of high school play. Wow, well, I'm with you there. I'll tell you, and you named I'm, every level you were at, I, I was with you. I played the same stuff. You know? I think you're right. As Bellior loses it inside, able to recorral it as we take under 30 seconds to go here. Caldwell. Drives, English off the glass, couldn't finish. I may have got a hand on it. Did Blackwell, and now with 20 seconds, here come Haber de Grace. Credit to the Warriors playing this game out. Vincent Legend, three no good. Rebound tipped around. Grabbed by Ball, his reverse layup no good. He'll get it back. How about a jumper from the baseline as he knocks that through? And that could be the last shot of the game today. And St. George's on the night at the number five of Nation Busybones Highland Jersey gets retired. They get a big win, 56 to 43. They led wire to wire. Pat led by Jaden Bull. He had 14, but they got contributions up and down the roster. A nice performance here for the Hawks for the first time that we've been able to see them up close and personal. Yeah, uh, really, really, really great job. Again, using their length, limiting Haver to Grace, particularly in that first half where they really built this lead out. So one, one and done, one shot and done, and or turnovers, and the ability to get out and transition. They're a lengthy team. I think they're going to cause a lot of teams fits. Obviously, we talked about it. They've got, already got some quality wins here. Yeah. They got a win over Howard, who was fully loaded. Top um, three team. You know, and they were fully loaded. I mean, they had some guys suspended the prior game. They were all pretty much all back for, yeah. for that game. It was a 57-50 victory on the road. They got a victory over William Penn. Another started, top ten team. Another top ten team who's really starting to play well. And then lastly... You you uh you got a, a nice victory over um man I'm blanking. You gotta hate when that happens, Nick. Oh boy. Milford. There that's you right, go. Another tournament sorry, team. Sorry to the tournament team. team, yeah, that's right. Absolutely. Definitely gonna be a tournament team. So they've got some quality wins here and they come out and you can see why. It's the defense, it's the length, it's the ability to make things happen and get second chance opportunities for themselves. They, they just epitomized it here tonight. Yeah, they looked good. We're fantastic out in transition. Again, up 20 at the half. Mm -hmm. And, of course, on their way to a 13-point victory, 56-43. to 43. We went over the stats. Jaden Bully is your leading scorer. He's sitting just to the left of us over there talking with media. He's got 14 points. Again, a game high for the junior. And what a season he's been putting together as well. So, Pat, remember, you got to keep your eyes on this team. As you said earlier, mm -hmm. come playoff time. Absolutely you do. Uh, their defensive ability, that again, the length, the ability to apply pressure on ball, um, that's going to really help them come tournament time. Nick, there's a lot of great guards within the state of Delaware, and if they're able to limit the damage that guards you know, on opposing teams can do, uh, which they did here tonight and they've done in a few other games prior to this game, they're going to be able to potentially make some some havoc. We heard Coach Rod Griffin talk about the four years that Bones was was in high school. They were state championship, they were Sweet 16, Final Four, yep. Final Four. Wow. They got it. They got a team right now that could be just as good. Get themselves into the Bob Carpenter Center mix for sure. Wow, what a performance that would be. What a performance tonight from the Hawks of St. George's with Nation Busybones by Highland in the house. He was loving it over there in the far corner, throwing yeah. up the three on the three balls, and the Hawks certainly played like he was in the building here tonight. So, Pat, a great win for St. George's. Mm -hmm. um, I believe we're back in the schedule next week. Some stuff to iron out, and it will be William Penn, or excuse me, William Penn and Howard on Tuesday, barring any changes there. We'll get you the schedule. Delaware Live Sports Weekly picks up back on Wednesday. Yep. So a lot to look forward to. But, Pat, before we get out of here, NFC Championship is Sunday afternoon. That it is. 3 o'clock, Niners, Eagles. How you feel? As an Eagles fan, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good because I believe in my team. Having said that, 49ers are tough. I, let's let's not overlook it. I'm not as confident as I was last week. Yeah. I'm not as confident as I would be if we were playing Dallas. This is going to be a battle. I, I think it's going to be a three-point game. Um, 
I think the birds get it done though. I think 24-21. Uh, 24-21. There Pretty you go. You get a bird. score from Pat Garrett is yep. here on the broadcast. Yep. Make sure everybody enjoys that game on Sunday. I think it's the best four teams. It's going to be a fantastic yeah, conference sure. championship weekend. So for Nick Allison, Journey, Pat Garrett, Nick Halliday, Busy Bones, that number five is retired. It's going up in the rafters here at St. George's. And the Hawks, they get to win themselves by 13, 56-43, and improve to 12-2 on the season. We'll see you next time on Delaware Live Sports. The things that matter most happen right in our own backyard. Our neighbors, our schools, the places we go, and the people we know. And now there's one news outlet where our story is told. Delaware Live. Locally owned community-based news. Free to every reader. Because Delaware's future belongs to all of us. Quality journalism we can trust to help us take on the day. Delaware Live. Our state. Our news. Our home. The thing.